So, uh, Honorable Minister of Health, uh, the Commandant, Rwanda Military Hospital, representatives from different partners, implementing partners, ministerial staff here present, uh, staff from the Rwanda Military Hospital, media houses present today. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me again to welcome you to the official launch of uh, the voluntary medical health circumcision using uh, a non-surgical technique. Good afternoon, everybody. Oh, I know that uh, you wait a lot, but sorry for that. But I want a little bit more energy in this room. Good afternoon, everybody. Yes, because it's not a day like every day. It's a great day for Rwanda because it's a day where we are going to scaling up what we call voluntary male, uh, voluntary counseling and male circumcision. Uh, it is something we can do today because we have a device that is recognized by WHO that allows us to do it. Before it was, surgic, uh, before it was surgical, that means we need a theater. In a country with, where we don't have enough hospitals, of course, not enough hospitals. So it was, there was a competition, and now we have a device that allows us in totally safety manner, totally um, endorsed by WHO, uh, meaning for, uh, we knew that it was good, but now we have the official global authorities that al al allow us to do that. We can do that any place. And if um, we have a big demand, we can even do that in a classroom during the Sunday and the Saturday when there is no classes. Hmm? Uh, we can do that with lay people because we have shown that it's not dangerous. It's a system that has 10% less side effect than the surgical, 10% less danger. And uh, after four hours, the men can go to work. That means even if country like Rwanda where every single penny made by the work of the Rwandan is good to have the men at work. Hmm? Uh, and also when we move, after a few hours, the men can go. So um, for this day, uh, I'm very pleased with uh, my colleague, the commander of the camp. Uh, our support uh, UNAIDS uh, representative, WHO representative, our colleague from um, uh, those agencies, the partners that are here, the, the, the people from the ministry, UNFPA, uh, to say it's a cornerstone for Africa. We all know that male circumcision decreases the risk to be HIV infected by 60%. No drugs, nothing have done so consistently, give so consistently the same results. Of course, there is the condom, hmm? but for the condom, there is no exception. It's every time correctly done. And we know that sometimes they miss one and they miss the, the, the point. Hmm? Uh, so that means it's not 1999, it's 100%. Here it's done. Of course, why we add voluntary counseling male circumcision is because we are going to counsel the men for safe sex, for fidelity, if not safe sex. So that means the condom is still there, but with this 009% when it will not be done, the risk is 60% less. So this is the package we are going to offer. And uh, Rwanda is the first country to to do it uh, is good because we are far from controlling HIV infection in the side of prevention. We all know that prevention in HIV has been a big problem. Our colleague from UNIDS can tell you that. We have made so big progress in treatment, so big progress in prevention to mother to child. In a country like Rwanda, we have on less than 2% transmission. But in, ma in the fact that to, to decrease the transmission among adults, it's the first time we can do it massively. And something that we cannot neglect is 
we have uh, less pain, as we like the men. We like them not to suffer with, for the same results. So uh, we uh, encourage the family of the press to witness that, to disseminate that, because I think the men of the world deserve such a treatment, not only the Rwandan. So dear colleagues, commandant, the, 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 the members of uh, Kanombe Military Hospital, the member of the international community that helping us, WHO, UNF, uh, UNFPA, UNAIDS, and uh, all the colleagues, I think it's a great day. And it was uh, not losing your time than to wait a little bit. Hmm? Thank you very much. Honorable Minister, thank you for your inspiring words. I don't know if you remember this, but I do very clearly. It was exactly four years and 15 days ago that I first set foot on African soil, and it was here in Rwanda. And I came with my co-founder and chairman and shared with you, you were still a permanent secretary at the time before you became minister, a prototype, a design, a concept, a concept of a radical new device that was yet to be named. After explaining the medical principle behind the device, you said these exact words. I'm a pediatrician. I've conducted many male circumcisions in my life. This device will be safe and it will save Africa. Honorable Minister, those words have inspired me every day in the last four years and they're the reason that we're here with you today. You are a true visionary, so it's only natural for Rwanda to be the first country in the world to scale up non-surgical adult male circumcision. But this is not a story only about Rwanda. This is a story about half of a continent struggling with a deadly disease. If you Google, if you Google the United Nations World AIDS Clock right now, what you will find is that every 12 seconds, someone contracts HIV, and every 16 seconds, someone dies of AIDS. I'm here to tell you today that we have a groundbreaking innovation that can dramatically change the pace of that clock. And we can turn the tide on the pandemic of our generation. As the minister already noted, the, protective, the high protective effect of adult male circumcision I think it's important to note the broader context of the international community that has set a goal to circumcise 20 million men by the year 2015. Now, if that goal is met, we save 3.5 million lives and $16.5 billion in long-term health care costs. But in six years, only 10% of that goal has been met. So we have two years to meet 90% of that goal. We're at a tipping point in history where the existing methods and the status quo is just not enough anymore. And that's why we created Prepex, to offer a safe, simple, and scalable solution for the continent that is sustainable, which means that Africa can get this done on their own without bringing Western surgeons with the help of the international community and donors, such as those who are sitting here today. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and PEPFAR are funding pilots throughout the region right now. And once those pilots have been done, Rwanda will pave the way for how scale-up in Africa can happen quickly and safely. So folks, I look back at the last four years and the journey that I've went through, and I think about the countless lives that have been lost and the 17 million orphans that remain as a result of this horrendous disease. Day in and day out, I remember this clock, and I think about every 16 seconds that someone is dying of AIDS. We now have the tools to make a monumental change in the fight against HIV, and I'm telling you today that we can turn the tide against AIDS if we work together. God bless, and thank you. Thank you.
Good luck to us all. One, two, three. Here we go.